I'm a little lost here. I signed on to watch a Halloween movie. Hi everyone, Anthony here from Awesome Anthony Productions, and today we're going to continue Spooktober with my review of the epic conclusion to the Halloween saga, the final fight between Michael Myers and Laurie Strode, Halloween ends. But before we get started, you know exactly what to do. Scroll on down, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell so that you never miss any of my content. You can also find my TikTok and my Instagram in the description below. Let's get into it. Look, I'm just gonna come right out and say it. The marketing lied to everybody about this film. Straight up. The final trailer gave us a tiny glimpse of what the actual movie might end up being, but for the most part, this was sold as the epic final battle between Laurie and Michael. And thanks to that marketing, people like myself, who were a little disappointed with the last movie, were actually excited to see where this conclusion was going to go. And I was expecting something like maybe a cat and mouse with Laurie and Michael chasing each other and fighting each other here and there throughout the movie until they have one final, last, brutal confrontation. That's not this movie at all. And that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing had it not been for the direction that the filmmakers decided to take it in. Halloween Ends centers on Lori, played for the last time by Jamie Lee Curtis, and her granddaughter Allison, played by Andy Matichek, who are just trying to pick up their lives and live about four years after the events of Halloween Kills. They're also still living in Haddonfield for some stupid reason, just trying to pick up the pieces. That's when Allison meets Corey Cunningham, played by Rowan Campbell, a young outcast accused of murdering a kid that he babysat, and they strike up a romance based on trauma that has Lori on edge because that kid kind of reminds her of Michael. That's pretty much all I can say without spoilers, so let's just get into what I didn't like about this film because there's quite a bit. For starters, where the hell is Michael? And why did they massacre my boy? And when I say massacre, don't take that as a spoiler. I'm not talking about whether or not he dies. I'm just saying that Michael was ruined in this film and he's barely in it. He's in maybe 10 minutes to be generous and the 10 minutes that he's in, he's not the unstoppable killing machine that we know from Halloween Kills. He's like a wounded puppy. I guess they were just trying to say that he took so much damage in Halloween Kills that it's taken a toll on him and he's barely been able to recover but it just didn't really come across to me and it just felt like they took this unstoppable force and made him into a little wimp. I mean, we saw this guy take bullets, stab wounds. He got a lot of damage in the last movie. He got back up and kept on killing like it was nothing. So to see him four years later still weakened, it just felt kind of weird to me. Sure, I applaud the filmmakers for trying to give us something a little different and not just give us another version of Michael carves his way through a town, but my god, hardly any of it works, and that is all thanks to the writing. The actors are all still giving it 100%, especially Rowan Campbell who plays Corey, because regardless of how thinly his plot and romance with Allison is written, he still gives a really great performance. Jamie Lee Curtis is also great here, and this is the most I've enjoyed her in almost any Halloween film. She's much more charming and calm here, and she's not sidelined like she was all through the last movie. These two characters make it a little bit more bearable, but everything else from the characters to the plot, everything just needed better writing. The dialogue is almost more cringeworthy than the last film, though thankfully there's no repeated epithet like evil dies tonight that's repeated over and over again until it's stuck in your damn head. Evil dies tonight! Evil dies tonight! And besides the dialogue, the script also has some very thin and cheap scenes that are just thrown in for the illusion of character development when they really don't do much for the film. There's also situations that will definitely make you want to scream at the TV out of frustration with how stupid and out of character some of these characters act in this film, including Allison being completely oblivious to all the red flags in her new relationship with Corey, and a very stupid stupid scene involving Lori, a knife, and a misunderstanding. You can also tell all through the first half of the movie who's actually going to die when the killing starts because they're written like Stephen King bullies. They are so sadistic and evil to the point where it just feels completely unrealistic and you know they're just trying to make you hate these characters so that you don't feel bad when they die later in the film. It just comes off as cartoonish. There's also the terribly written relationship between Allison and Corey. It makes no sense and the chemistry is just not there. It also makes no sense for Allison to immediately throw a fit and turn on Lori just because Lori doesn't like the kid that reminds her of the serial killer who murdered her daughter. Look, normally this stuff wouldn't be that big of a problem in a Halloween movie because it tends to start to take a backseat to the blood and gore and kills. Hell, Halloween Kills had completely stupid characters, but all the kills and blood and gore made that movie so much fun to watch. But N spends so much time on a thinly written plot with a brand new character that was nowhere else in the trilogy trying to get you to understand him and feel sympathy for him when all you're thinking is, where the hell is Michael Myers? So by the time the film finally does deliver on what you want to see, 
it doesn't hit as hard as it could. The writers also bring up and play with a bunch of different themes and ideas, but they never really go anywhere. Not to mention all the plot holes in that script, like the plot point of the fact that Michael's been hiding under a bridge in a tunnel for the last four years, under a busy bridge, that's like right next to the town and you're telling me nobody found him? And there's another one that I mentioned earlier. Allison and Lori are still living in Haddonfield. I shouldn't even need to elaborate on that. Based on everything that's happened in that town and all the people that they've lost, why would you still want to be there? With all that being said, I don't completely hate this movie. The performances are all great regardless of the writing. And I actually really enjoyed the beginning and the ending. And the reason I enjoyed the beginning is because I wasn't really liking it at first. It felt like a very typical cliche opening to a Halloween movie where you know that we're gonna get some suspense, we're gonna get to know maybe like a babysitter or something, and then Michael's gonna come in and kill them. But that's not what we get. And in the beginning, the film almost relishes with knowing that that's gonna be your expectation because it plays with those slasher expectations and then hits you with a punch that you did not see coming. From there, I also enjoyed picking back up with Lori. It was nice seeing her try to move on and writing her memoirs. And she has a really nice moment with Will Patton's Frank that made me smile that picked up off their chemistry from the last movie. I guess you. Yeah. yeah. I remember. In the last 25 minutes or so, I definitely enjoyed because it finally gave me what I watched this movie for, the final showdown between Michael and Lori, and what I expected to see because it was all over the marketing. And once that showdown is over, the ending that comes from it is definitely one I applaud, especially for a Halloween movie with characters actually making a definitive, smart decision for once in their lives. I also enjoyed all the kills here, regardless of what doesn't work in the film. It definitely brings the tension, creativity, blood and gore that we've come to expect from this trilogy, along with a mean sense of humor that adds just a little bit of twisted fun in there. It's just unfortunate that these positives are overshadowed by the writer's attempts to bring in all these different themes and break the formula, but the fact that they did it in a really poorly executed way. For me, Halloween 2018 might as well be just a one-off, a near-perfect sequel to the original, and I have grown to have a bit of an appreciation for the second one, but this one just had barely anything to hold my interest outside of the beginning and the ending. Honestly, they should have done this trilogy backwards and had it take place in one weekend. Start with the story from end, start with Lori moving on from her trauma from the original Halloween night back 40-something years ago, have very little Michael in it, but have him build up his return until at the end, it's kind of like Voldemort, like, oh shit, he's back, and then have the second movie be what Halloween killed was, which is Michael carving his way through Haddonfield, racking up a body count and eventually killing Lori's daughter, until the final movie in the trilogy could have been what Halloween 2018 was, which involved Michael working his way towards Lori and killing his way there while Lori gets ready and gets ready to fight. I feel like that would have worked so much better, and they could have actually decided whether or not Michael was going to be a mystical evil creature or just a regular man because they go back and forth on that plot point through all three of these movies. And that's my review of Halloween Ends, a movie that definitely deserved to be on Peacock. With a poorly written script that subverts expectations in very frustrating ways, evil stereotypical characters that foreshadow and give away exactly who's gonna die, and a lack of focus on what the audience truly wanted to see and were sold just left me feeling bleh after this movie. Though not without its high points thanks to its kills, strong opening, and badass finale, this ends up being little more than a very disappointing ending to a trilogy that started out pretty strong and immediately went downhill. Sound familiar? Thank you so much for watching everybody, and if you like this review, please go ahead and leave a like. You can also comment below and let me know what you thought. And go ahead and scroll down there, hit the subscribe button, and ring the bell so that you never miss any of my content. You can also find the links to my Instagram and my TikTok in the description below. You can also click or tap on these cards here. I'll take you to my review of Werewolf by Night, or just over to my channel where you can find my reviews, my shorts, and my old shit. Also, let me know if you want a spoiler discussion for this movie, because I have a lot to talk about that I couldn't cover here. See ya!